Welcome to today's stream. We are going to talk today about personal branding in data because I'm not the super expert on this. I have invited an expert, Kate Strachny. She is the founder of Datacated. She wrote a book about color wise, how to present uh, stuff with nice colors, I would say. She's laughing in the background. And um, she did a really good course about personal branding on LinkedIn Learning that is absolutely worth checking out. Has a lot of followers and you might, if you come from uh, LinkedIn, you might know her. So let's bring her in. Hello, hey, hello. Thanks for having me on the show, Andreas. Hi. Um, to everybody who is here, before we start, uh, if you have questions to this, let us know the questions in the chat because we are going to go over them. I think it's an interesting topic and we should, uh, we should have a few good Questions here. I already see a lot of people here. Rufit here. Hi. Hello. Hi, Hi. Me and the names. You know, you know me. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Sometimes when in doubt, don't even try, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> True. Although so, I still try, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into it, uh, Kate. Personal branding for everybody. What is actually personal branding? Like yeah, I think I define personal branding as what people say about you when you're not in the room. So let's say you're in a room full of 20 people that are familiar with you. You step out to get a cup of coffee and people say something like, oh, you know, Andreas, yeah, he's great with data engineering. He has an academy. He plays guitar. He likes singing sometimes, you know, <laughs> he's got he's got kids. He works from home, sort of the things that come to mind when they think of you like, oh, he's in Germany. So all the little criteria, the little adjectives that come to mind when people think about you or are asked about you, I would say that is your personal brand. A lot of times people think a personal brand is just your job. And I actually think it goes a bit beyond that. It goes into not just your job, but also who you are personally, right? It's personal branding. It's not career branding. Um, is, is this a nice person? Is this a social person? Do they like to do things on their own? So all of that, I would say, encompasses your personal brand. But it, it also like it also has career branding in it, right? Because. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think for the purposes of this conversation, I think the focus is going to be very much on building a personal brand for a career or for your business. And it's all about what people think about you or what you want to be known for. So sometimes you have a personal brand that you build intentionally and you, you know, you go out of your way, you post content every day, you get on podcasts, you have conversations on a specific topic, and that sort of builds your personal brand intentionally. Other times we build a personal brand indirectly by doing the things that we would naturally do anyways. So if, for example, you've always worked in financial services, You've always worked, um, you know, whatever you were doing, you ended up working in banking. That sort of starts to build your personal brand indirectly, even though you weren't intending to be the uh, financial services expert or whatever. It ends up being that, you know, that ends up being your personal brand just by the nature of you doing that type of work. But there are things you could do intentionally. If you don't like your personal brand, you can definitely get in the driver's seat and drive towards where you want to be. Uh, it just takes a little bit of effort and sometimes a lot of time, <laughs> time investment. But should it, like sometimes I feel people are forced trying to force this, right? So it should it should should come from what you're naturally good at or or where you actually naturally want to go, right? Like yeah. for me, it was always the engineering thing, and then so it, I hope that people think of engineering when they when they hear my <laughs> when they first right. <laughs> So that's more natural, but I, I could not see, or I think it's it's strange sometimes when people now try to rebrand as something. Well, sometimes you do have to rebrand. So I'll, I'll share a quick story. Um, when I was still in consulting, I used to work on PowerPoint presentations all the time. Okay, and in consulting, it's sort of like a big deal. You're you're doing everything in in slides and decks, and I was really good at it because well, I had no choice. I did it all the time. So very quickly, I became known as the, the person on the team who is good at this. So give her all this work. Did I enjoy that work? No, it was a lot of like alignment of little boxes, making sure the font type is correct. Like the colors, which I do care a lot about, um, are on brand and spot on. 
And over time, I had to sort of shift myself away from that, not by becoming bad at it, but by becoming good at something else and by doing more of that thing. For me, it ended up being data visualization with Tableau. So I started taking on side projects and sort of putting in more effort to be seen as the Tableau person versus the PowerPoint person. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that did take some effort. I did have to go through a rebrand, but I think more times than not, it does happen naturally by you just doing the things that you want to be known for. We could argue that this transition also was naturally, that you were working with PowerPoint and then... It was it's natural, not, it's not a, but... It's wait, not, it's not it's a hundred percent new thing. You know what I mean? It was, it was kind of, because I actually ended up doing a lot of free work, if that counts. Like, you know, um, as a consultant, you get paid regardless of what you do. But I would start taking on side projects that would end up training other teams on how to do Tableau just because I really, not because I wanted to rebrand myself. I just really loved the work. So I guess you could say, fine, fine. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause for Andreas. Point, point for me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that we count points here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you are counting points. Someone write that in the comment. Andreas one, Kate zero. I'll <laughs> no, get you at the no, end. Don't no. worry. We're, we're okay. not. We're not counting. We're not. Otherwise, I'm going to lose badly because you usually. Yeah. You know, I like competitions. So, so uh, w w I, see, I see one thing here from Chess here. Yes. Nice oh, LinkedIn instructor yeah. shirt. Yes, I, I got that I, for one of my courses. I already saw that. I I didn't get one. <laughs> You know, you can just let them know. Well, mine was also in person. They gave me a little goodie bag. So. Yeah, cool. Very good. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so that's the, the re so how do you think? Oh, let's, let's, let's first get into a question and then from, from someone here. Sagar asked here, how to get started in branding? Hi, how Sagar. Thanks for joining. I think how to get started is usually defining what you want your personal brand to be. And it doesn't have to be this elaborate paragraph of like, Sagar wants to be known as, you know, blah, blah, blah. It could be very simple. Put your name on a piece of paper and put five things around that name and that just basically encompass what you want to be known for, you know. So I didn't catch your, your title there, but let's say you're a data scientist. Mm -hmm. At a company in that industry, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't show unless you actually click on the profile. Yeah. But put some descriptors out there of what you actually want to be recognized for. Are you good with R or Python or are you good with data visualization, right? Data engineering, perhaps. So throw all those things out there, and then that will sort of give you a ballpark starting point of what your personal brand is now. And then you can also add in some things of what you want to be known for. I would say that's the very beginning stage. Once you've nailed down that you want to be known for these like three things, the next step is to actually start actively building that brand. I think the easiest way in, in this day and age is to put content out on those topics. So if your topic was data engineering and you want to be known as a data engineer, maybe a senior data engineer, start putting out one piece of content a day on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you, you think your audience lives, wherever you actually enjoy spending time, start putting out content there on a daily basis. And like it or not, you will just start to create that personal brand. And it doesn't even matter what you're saying about that topic, meaning it doesn't have to be something profound that no one's said before. It has to be just mm -hmm. seeing the world through your eyes. Like, oh, I just saw a news article about this new data engineering company, and here's my opinion. Like, that's already a piece of content. It doesn't have to be difficult. It could be a summary of a class you took, a book you read. Maybe you took a course in the Learn Data Engineering Academy and you yeah. wanted to provide feedback. That's another piece of content. So that's actually something that I always tell my students. Yeah. Every course that you do, you have the documentation, you have the source codes, you have it, you have the GitHub repo for this. Make this your own and post this and talk about this. Add your documentation to it, your thoughts where you had problems. There should be more people doing this, but that's, yeah, that's, that's also. Yeah, it's so simple well. these days to actually create content. You can even use ChatGPT to get ideas, right? Of like types of content mm -hmm. once, once you run out of ideas. I have the only, only for, only for ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very obvious when your post starts with hello data folks or hello data enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> we know, we know where it's coming from, guys. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> we need That's original true. content. Let's, let's go with that. Yeah, it will go true. much further if it's your original thoughts. Yeah, and also long term, right? It's not not just like give up after a week. No, absolutely. I would say give it a full year of daily content before you can say it didn't work. Um, mm -hmm. It will start working way before that year is up. And obviously, you're not just throwing out content and then closing your laptop and running away. You have to engage on comments that come in, engaging on other people's content on the similar topics is also very helpful, especially if you feel like maybe you're not ready to come out there with your original piece of content. I know that does scare some people, although I'll tell you, and I'm sure Andreas will agree, it's not that scary. People are generally very nice. Um, most people are generally very nice. But if you're not ready to get started with that, you could start just engaging with other people's content on that topic. Yeah. But also, like, I have this very often with students and also with somebody who's who created something for me. Like, okay. just post it. Nobody gives a shit. Like, if it's bad. <sighs> I'm telling if, you, if my it's, first... if it's that if it's that bad, then delete it after a week. Nobody cares. Is... My the, first the... few posts, I was so scared that somebody I knew would see this. And then after that, I'm like, okay, how do I get more people to see this? <laughs> this is like my <laughs> thinking. So because then I realized really nobody cares. There's so much out there that the worst thing that will happen is they will look at it and maybe keep scrolling, right? Like, oh no, you yeah. won't even know they saw it. For most, uh, for most people who don't engage. Yeah. yeah. So put yourself out there. Yes. Always. Um, Thomas here said, sounds like the stacking exercise, three of the most memorable things about a person. What I haven't heard of a stacking exercise, but yeah, I agree that that is a great way to start on your personal brand. Like you can even, that could be your first post. You could post this today. You just, you know, let your audience know you heard it from the Andreas and Kate show um, and just ask them, hey, audience, people, friends, you could do this publicly or, you know, message your friends and say, what are the top three things that come to mind when you think of me? And maybe tell them that this is more of a career focus. So they don't say things, you know, that might be just maybe too personal. And then take those three things from each individual. If you can get 10 people to give you three things each, I guarantee you'll start to see some sort of consistency, some sort of um, trend where it's like, okay, almost everyone has said this word, maybe yeah. this means something and sort of go through all that. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So I should do this as well. <laughs> I've done it. It's so cool to see what people think of it. I, I told them to pick the one thing that comes to mind. Um, most of it was just data, data, dedicated, data, 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 running data, data, data. So. It, for me, it would be most, most likely you can fix computers. Yeah. <laughs> fix computers? <laughs> As an engineer, what, what is Andreas doing? No idea. He's good with computers. Well, my um, family, yeah, my family has not much of a clue. <laughs> actually, do. this is on LinkedIn that I posted, so this is different. Okay. She um, posts pictures. That's what people think about me. <laughs> Here's so. a good one. That's actually very good. What's the difference between a personal brand or mm -hmm. personal branding and a, as a technical person and one for the passionate hobbies, like? Yeah, so I think it's is. important to combine them, right? So I have like a 90%, 10% rule where 90% of my content will be technical or at least related to what I want to be known for in the career perspective. Mm -hmm. And then I do try to sprinkle in 10%, maybe even less than 10% of my personal stuff. And by personal, I mean some of my hobbies like running and hiking and then picking up the guitar again. And sometimes I'll share like I painted something. And I think what that does is it makes you look more human and more approachable and then gives people something to connect with you on. Like, oh, I'm also a runner and Kate's a runner. And like, we can talk about that versus just talking about the technical stuff. They'll follow you. I think for the most part, people will follow you for the technical stuff, but they'll sort of see you as more of a friend and a friendly face if you share some of your personal stuff. I would say there is a limit, though. We, we don't want... Mm. People don't want to see too much of it. Um, that's my theory is once you start posting way too much personal stuff, I think it becomes a whole different. And then, that's just my opinion. Some people really like to go very personal. Um, I'd, lo yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Andreas. You know, well, you know me, I most like mostly share almost nothing about my, <laughs> my personal life, which is not good. 
yeah. I'm I'm the typical German engineer. It's like this is my work and this is <laughs> this is uh, me at home. Um, yeah, yeah I, I also agree. It's like you should have a, a balance. Um, and it also can be fun. But if you're passionate, like for me, I've shown you my Lego collection that I just built the Mandalorian Lego he Lego head. I think your kids background. built that. I didn't know you built that. You showed it to <laughs> no, it's like for and uh, like it's fun. Why not share it? Absolutely, uh, exactly. So share it, show it to show it to. I, the I already did a post on LinkedIn, but it had a picture in it, and nobody. I know, saw but you it can it. show it to people now, well, guys. Do you want to see? Wait, let's ask the audience if they want to see this, <laughs> and then you'll show it if somebody's interested. Put a, put a one in the chat if you want to see the Mandalorian hat. Put a zero if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> one to zero. So let's go binary. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Get those ones in there, guys. It's worth it. It was cool. So. Uh, okay. I know. Yeah. You don't, you don't really share your um, personal stuff as much, but I think sometimes when you do, it does give people the ability to connect with you a bit more. Oh, yeah. oh we've got ones coming in, Andreas. There. Oh, okay. 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 I'm going to bring it over. One sec. You're going to have to go get it. And for now, I'll, uh, wow, that's a lot of ones. I saw Sunny in the audience picking up the guitar. Yes. It's actually right here. I've got my guitar from 10 years ago. Yeah. And I'm so I actually, I just, it. I just built this last last week and there the we kids go. didn't the kids didn't know about it and that's the fun part keeping <laughs> this thing secret from the kids and then you did this in the office or what no i built it at, at home at night from from 10 10 p.m i started building it i always <laughs> so i i like these i like these uh this, it, this is not the best one the darth vader one actually was the more fun to build yeah but i, I it's it's a, a bit of a hobby I think I think they're cool. See, the audience literally not a single zero in there. They all said zero point five. You're okay. <laughs> oh, CJ, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay, um, that much about this. So let, let me let me quickly jump. The, if you have seen the comment, I just need to scroll back up again. If I, I did. Saw. Well, Sora was asking if that's a Gibson. No, it's a Yamaha. So just it was a question about my guitar. So oh, <laughs> let me see. Excellent. I did see questions on. Uh, uh I see Keith there. He, he, here was here was a, here's a good one. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. This is so it's from LinkedIn user, so I don't know who wrote it. Okay. Hi Kate. So completed the masters, looking for a job as an analyst, build a portfolio of expertise, still facing issues, getting interview calls. How can I cr increase my visibility? Now okay. let, <laughs> let's let's see, let's say this is not a a thing that let's say the the CV is okay in this case, right? Yeah, it's just something is missing. What, what, can, so, what can somebody do? I think the, the main question there was no matter what the situation, I think the, the point is how do we increase visibility on LinkedIn, right? Whether you grad, got your master's, your bachelor's, you completed a certification, you did a boot camp, you did some um, training, one-on-one -on -one coaching, whatever that might be. I think everyone could use some help in improving their visibility. So I think the fact that you created a portfolio is already a great step forward where you're putting your work out there. I would want to know more about where your portfolio lives uh, because putting a portfolio somewhere in a dark corner of the web is the same as me saying, you know, I have all my work in here and I'm just going to keep it, you know, keep it on my desk. No one's going to see it. Right. So the whole point now is you need to get people to actually view it. How do we do that? Well, we have this free thing called social media where you can literally post on it. Um, I've been experimenting with posting 20 times a day from my dedicated page. So yeah, you can post 20 times a day. If you've got the time, um, you don't have to post 20 times a day. It's actually counterproductive. But to post at least once a day about what's in that portfolio, come out there with a 30 second, a 60 second video about what you did, your experience every single day. People will have no choice but to like to see it, right? So that in, alone increases visibility. I think also getting friends in the space to engage with you, have conversations with you and have them post about your portfolio can also increase visibility as long as it's not like um, you're not just randomly going up to strangers and saying, hey, can you share this? Like you actually have to know them, be friends with them, make sure that they understand that they're, you're not just coming them coming to them because you want something, um, but also trying to engage with them. And those are, you know, social media, I guess, is my, my short answer for visibility uh, what do you think Andreas 
already was with the next question here. Um, I think you, everything you said was right. It's and yeah, I don't know what to add here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I, I would say uh, one there, last there thing were, is were... continue to increase on that portfolio, right? Just because it's done yeah. doesn't mean you can't continue to do projects and have that will also give you fresh content as you're working on projects, as you're picking them. Be very public about it. Like, hey, I'm looking for a project. Any tips? Your audience would actually help you. I, I was surprised the first time I got any support from strangers on on the internet, but it was beautiful, and it sort of just kept me coming back. Yeah. What while I was saying, I was at the next question that because I saw one that fits very well to what you just said, and okay. that's here. What kind of post would you suggest to write on LinkedIn, or like let's let's treat this for just anywhere? Okay. Right. What type of posts <clears throat> would like would you would you post frequency? You already said you could post twenty times, but that's not okay. really. Uh, well, let's just keep it to one or twice <laughs> or two. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I think once a day is more than enough for the frequency, so we can cover off on that. I think that's more for a LinkedIn and, and YouTube response. I think on Twitter you could probably do twenty times a day, and it'll be true. perfectly fine. So it depends where you want to engage. But this this person clearly asked about LinkedIn. So once a day. In terms of the type of content, uh, the beauty of LinkedIn is there are so many types of content you could share. So I do cover this in the course, which I think you can watch it for free on LinkedIn Learning. And uh, we've got the link in the description. But there are image posts, um, native video posts, live stream like Andreas and I are doing right now. There are articles, there are newsletters, there are polls, and there are text posts and also carousel posts. I'm sure I missed something. They keep coming out with new styles and formats and you can upload actual documents. So, so many methods out there. I think first starting with what you're comfortable with, right? If you're not comfortable on the video, that shouldn't be the first thing you do because chances are you're going to be staring at the camera for half a day, thinking what to say, re-recording, hating the sound of your own voice, yeah. putting on makeup or whatever you might be doing just like uh, to, to make it better. And it might go down the rabbit hole. If you're fine with it, go for video. I think it's very engaging, very personal. The easiest is probably to write something. If you're a, not a great writer, you can use images to sort of maybe catch attention. But writing something short generally does really well on LinkedIn. I think in terms of views, the thing I've seen the work the best in actually the past few years has been polls. Ever since LinkedIn polls came out, they've been killing it in terms of getting eyeballs. It might not get the most engagement or interaction, but if I had a, a written text post that I posted today and a poll that I posted today, one will get maybe 2,000 views while the other one will get 30,000 views. The other one meaning the polls. <laughs> I don't know why, Andres, I know you you see this as well. I think most people will see that. They just yeah. push out polls like crazy. That doesn't mean you should do polls every single day. I think use it sparingly, but that's- Yeah, yeah for, for me, I do, I do daily usually. <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> or twice daily but i i see exactly this i i personally i don't like this because how linkedin is because yesterday i posted about our our uh, live stream today i think a thousand six hundred people saw this and but I have Andrea, some people will kill followers. for that some people don't have a thousand views right yes that's yes but I, you know that's what that's one percent of the followers and i think that yeah. should not that that's it. not that's not i okay. get it but that's that was that was more. Let's uh, drill a bit down on this. That was more like how to and the medium. Yeah. But right, um, which topics do you generally mm -hmm. think are are best to to attack in the beginning? Um, like it what, do, what, what would you write? Yeah. So if I were, let's. It would definitely depend on where I am in my career and what I want to be known for, right? So again, let's use the example of a, a data engineer. And let's say it's somebody who got a certification and now they want a job. Um, so I think I would start posting about some things that I learned from wherever program I just came out of. Or if I had a job before this, I would share my experience. So like, you don't have to give away too much, especially, you know, some companies have a lot of privacy laws where you don't want to get in trouble, but just sharing like, hey, I worked on this project and this is the approach I took and these are the tools I used. I would usually end with a question for the audience because the engagement is what gets people talking to you. Usually if you're scrolling through 10 posts and they're all like informational, like, hey, I took this certificate, it was great. Like, okay, keep scrolling. 
Mm-hmm. And then if you yes. get to a post that says like, um, I'm thinking to do a self-study versus sign up for a boot camp. What do you guys think? Immediately you will stop and you're like, okay, well, I did a boot camp or I did self-study, right? And then you'll write a comment. Without that question, people are just going to keep scrolling. So I think having a question, especially if it's very relevant to that person, they would be willing to come out there and help you. So those types of posts is something that I would I would start with. Um, what do you think about the typical how-tos? Like explaining something. If there's something you know really well, uh, I think you can absolutely put a how-to out there. Even the longer form articles are really good. Sometimes people think that what they know is not special. They're like, well, this is out there on the web already. And I I just want to stop you right now because I think everyone has their own very unique perspective on what they know. So maybe you know how to do it better, how to do it faster. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're a complete beginner and you messed up these on these three things. Chances are all the other beginners are messing up on those three things as well. And you sharing that, they're like, oh man, I also like messed that one up. So they can relate to you. Generally, they want to follow, people want to follow people who are just like at their level or slightly ahead of them mm. versus people who are maybe way ahead, right? So don't wait until you're a complete expert because by that point you've forgotten sort of what it's like to be at that beginner stage. And you can no longer relate to them as well. Yes. Sometimes it's also perceived that you perceived as an expert. Like you, you don't do believe, that. <laughs> you would not believe sometimes when I when I co- when I do some coding and like <laughs> I'm not an expert at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's a great point because a lot of people have asked me about like um imposter syndrome, right? Hey, don't mm. you have imposter syndrome? Like even right now. So You brought me on the show to talk about personal branding. Am I an expert? Absolutely not. Am I willing to tell people what I know? Absolutely. I think, and the fact I don't have imposter syndrome here is because I'm not coming out here saying, well, I've got a PhD in personal branding. And like, I don't even know if that's a thing, right? But I'm not here to say I'm the best. I'm here to share what I've gone through, share my little stories of maybe challenges or successes and wins just so people can hear my perspective. And I think that takes so much pressure off of me where I no longer have to pretend that I know everything. If I outright tell people I don't know everything, it just makes it it's so much easier for that's for you as a as a creator. That's actually true. That's very true. I, I yeah, I'm very, very good that I introduced you as the expert. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Um, You touched already touched on this. I just want to bring this up because I see this a few times in the comments here. Yeah. And uh, personally, I got a bit stuck with uh, the mentally of the, what, the mentality, mentality, the mentality of the original idea. I'm puzzled when I see the same angle shared again and again. What, what do you think about this? You know, there's a quote. I forgot whose quote is it. It is, but it says there's nothing new under the sun, right? Uh, I think it's a book book I read about uh, copying people. So there is nothing new under the sun, right? There's originality is very hard to come by because everything has already been said. And I think mm. it goes back to my point of you have a unique perspective and you're looking at things through a different light, right? You might be um, from a different country. You might be a different age at a different stage in your career, different gender, ethnicity, whatever that might be. It's giving you a very different or how you were raised, right? All of these components give you a very unique perspective on whatever it is that you're talking about. And I think that's why it's important. We need all of these perspectives and voices to come together on social media, on LinkedIn, or wherever else you want to congregate to actually share those voices and perspectives. And I think Personal branding is not only about you, right, and benefiting yourself. It's also benefiting the entire community because other people might have not even looked at it that way. Um, and I, I'm sure sometimes you you scroll through and you're like, okay, well, 10 other people have said this before. Yes, and you might have seen it, but maybe a beginner who's never been in this community before hasn't seen it. So post it for the newbies, post it for people who are just breaking in here. I think there's no harm in repeating things as long as you are making it your own. So I wouldn't say, you know, don't copy paste anything from anybody. But if there's a general idea that you agree with, I see nothing wrong with you saying that you also agree with this idea, just sharing that message. Very true. Yeah, it's there. there's always going to be beginners and 
it's just like for me in engineering, right? And they love to see this type of content because it's very helpful. Um, here's a longer question, but I just want to, from, from Sylvester, I just want to uh, take the last part here. <clears throat> Have you ever felt like you've run out of ideas? I have never run out of ideas, um, Sylvester. I think my problem is I have too many ideas. And, and Jason and I were just talking. I have another idea, which I'll share soon with the community of what I want to do. Um, I think people are different. I think it's sort of like exercise. Once you start to get into it, you sort of, you get, a, I don't know, you get inspiration. The more you're on LinkedIn, the more you're inspired by other people's ideas and content, the more you share, the more sort of ideas flow into your head to share. I think it, it there is some truth to that whole, you know, doing the thing gives you more abilities to do whatever that thing is. Uh, so personally, I have not, but it's also because I generally collaborate with other individuals as well. So for my uh, dedicated show, for example, I generally have a guest that I talk to, which is another thing you can do if, if you like video or audio, you could do podcasts. Um, or you can even do written interviews if you do feel like you're out of ideas for a period of time, maybe, you know, for a month or two, you just don't know what else to post. You can have conversations with people and turn those conversations into articles. You can look at the news. You can also just scroll through your feed on social media. And I guarantee you will get ideas. You'll get inspired by something that you might want to react to. Let's say you see a post from Andreas that you disagreed with. You're like, no, Andreas, Lego sucks, right? Right. That's your new post. I think Lego sucks. <laughs> Look at Andreas's stuff, you know, although I think everybody I know loves Lego, but you get the idea. You'll see a post that you agree or disagree with. And then that's, that gives you an idea of what you can post instead of just commenting, maybe on somebody's content, you can start a new post that says, I saw, you know, I saw Sonny's content about ThoughtSpot and I wanted to share my, my thoughts on this. And that's, that's content right there. Content itself is just so much easier than people make it out to be. I think they think it's a scientific thing where you have to really sit down and draft it up. Like, no, you could do it on your bus ride home. It takes two minutes. I have to say for me, sometimes I don't know what to post. Like, post my stuff. I have so much stuff you can post. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you stuff. I'll no, you. It's, it's like there sometimes for me i'm i'm stuck like uh oh, with this would that interest people oh, most like that's boring or yes you scroll and then you see the hundreds how to get into data engineering in 2023 and it's like oh <laughs> i'm not going to do this again and so, so and I've, i don't know how many pieces of content i have created around data engineering the past years so sometimes for me with the specific uh topic it's it's difficult it's difficult and react wise as well because they're yeah, yeah. i think so, you have a on. unique um approach because you only talk about data engineering right i think for me it's a lot simpler because i talk about anything and everything relating to data AI and machine learning. And I have mm. guests on the show and I have like uh, sponsors and posts for them and newsletters. So I'm literally always like, oh man, I already have a post for the next few weeks lined up and I can't post my own stuff because of that. Uh, so it's a bit more difficult. I agree when you're posting about just data engineering day in, day out for years, you might get to a point where you're like, did I already say this? Um, <laughs> did my audience already see this exact same thing? And I think it does sort of make you sit back and try to get a bit more creative. Um, so I think, yeah, I think for you, you might need some more exercises of like, okay, how can I turn these 10 things into polls? How can I turn these into videos and maybe repurposing some of that old content? But again, having other people on your show can also give you a new spark of ideas. But also repurposing content can also be some mm. uh, something for for personal branding, right? You create something for for LinkedIn. Why yeah. not use this for Twitter in a shorter form, right? You don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. You have a good idea, post it on multiple platforms. Yeah, I like what Andrew just said. If you want to um, put that one up, because you were just you were just talking about that. So self promotion is something. That I do want to cover because I know so for you, your perspective, you've got your Learn Data Engineering Academy. And yeah. 
I know, Andrew, you have data science infinity. You don't want to sound like you're constantly saying, hey, everybody, buy my stuff. <laughs> I have a great course here. Like, even though it is a great course, people might get sick of hearing it every day, especially if they already bought your course, right? So it's like, yeah. how, do you, how do you actually balance the self-promotion versus talking about just generic data engineering stuff? For me, it's very difficult. So if I could, <clears throat> I would never post about my academy, never. I would never post about about like these, here's the course, buy my course, buy my academy. I would never do this. But unfortunately, I'm not in the position where like people just come well, from Well, let somewhere. me stop you. Why would you never do this? I, f I feel like this is like, I don't like this pushy nature mm -hmm. of it. Like, hey, have you seen this? Like, I, I want to just do, I would have just do p fun posts, just yeah. interesting stuff, just sharing this and that. Um, but unfortunately, I need to find the balance. For me, it was very often or last year, and we're going to also come back to this as most likely one piece of content a day that leads to a course of the academy. Right. And but I always like I, I personally, I don't like this. But you have to you have it to is do necessary it. though, right? It's even necessary. even if you don't run a business, let's say you're looking for a job and you want to promote yourself, self-promotion is important. I think it goes back to balance. We don't want to just see posts of you selfies like I accomplished this, I accomplished that. Look at mm. me, I'm so awesome. Like people get I think you should do that, maybe limit it to once every two months, once every month, where you have the very self-promo post. Because if you don't tell people, they won't know, which is the other thing. Yeah. So you kind of do have to use social media for a bit of that self promo. But I think balancing it with good quality content where people can either be entertained or learn from you, informed, educated, whatever, um, that balance is what keeps people coming back. But again, it is a very delicate balance. Yeah. You don't want people to get yeah. sick of the same content. What, what I'm what I'm usually doing is I I post my uh, links to the academy with a poll okay and i try to make this poll as interesting and for people so that they learn something like if uh -huh. i pose just a stupid example like if, it, right, if right, it's right. No, it. if it's if it's something about apache spark yeah. then the first thing that comes to my mind of course i can't do the same one any uh, all the time but it's like what's more what's more uh, used spark or flink Right? Yeah, Spark of right. Link. There's a lot of always this conversation about around it. And then people can actually click and they can see, okay, this is more this is more used to, and, and so on and so on. So that's that's how I try to actually balance it out to Yeah. Yeah. I I have a, an idea. This is definitely not something we planned, but you can you can let me know if you don't want this. Maybe the audience can help us decide. Should we look at our last past seven days, top three performing posts, just to show people an idea of like, what does well for our audience? Do you want to, <laughs> like, do you guys want to see some behind the scenes? Cause I, I really don't mind. We could put do a one, put a one in the chat, a one in the chat if you want to see this and the two, if you don't want to see this. Hey, what happened Let's to go. zero? We're binary, what um, are you doing? Okay, one then we do zero. So two, that means one, you really want to see it. Two, <laughs> <laughs> so no, one if you want turns, to see right? this just, and zero if not just to show and maybe talk very briefly about the the top the top three things top maybe you want to do past seven days or past 30 days let me you first, guys, you look, let me first look at it for myself <laughs> wait sorry what did you say let me first look at it in, in the background <laughs> <laughs> you're going to decide based on your so we're going to go look at um let's say past 28 days by impressions um, okay, let, let's let's oh see. we've got a lot of ones and some yeses i think people want to see behind the scenes because okay, we create so content let's... all the time so 28 days past 28 days top three performance yeah okay so let me know if you want me to go first or if you want to go first <laughs> mine mine's pretty boring I, I I didn't know what to expect with mine, um, okay. so it's interesting. So to let, see. let me bring it up. Let me bring it. Okay, I, you I go first. Need to, I need to clean up my my window first. You so, gotta clean stuff up. Share the screen. All right. Share 
Sorry, nice. sorry, um, Andreas. I know this wasn't planned, but I do think it's no, gonna no, be fun. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. So, here we are. Okay. Let me make this a bit bigger. So that's the last twenty-eight days. Mm -hmm. By I had five hundred thousand impressions, which okay. is fine. Um, my top post was a poll. Okay. <laughs> about a webinar for a client. Okay. That was for um, forty-five thousand. That's amazing. Yeah, forty-five thousand. That had a thousand and four four hundred votes, or f almost five hundred. Then that was, I think that was that was also one for for a single store actually. Okay. Um, that had forty thousand, and that I actually don't know <laughs> who's that. Ah, oh, that was that was something for my academy. Okay. Oh, there was, you go. See. You look, oh, you had a so poll. You batch processing. Which do you use most? So, if people want to push you towards streaming, you see where the <laughs> focus is, and that's <clears throat> that's what I like that people can actually learn about this. So right. that was thirty six thousand. Here, the, the top three for me. Okay. So. Let me let me stop the share. Where can I stop the share? I'm going to pull up my screen, guys. Let us know if this is helpful. Yeah, let like us know if this is helpful in the in the in the in the chat. So my top performing post. So uh, this we one. Don't see, oh, wait, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, top performing post. Can you zoom a bit in? Yes. How is this? Yep. Okay. So the first one was uh, which music do you instrument do you play? This is when I was considering to pick up my guitar again. So we had three hundred eighty nine mm. polls, twenty six thousand impressions. It was literally a poll of like guitar, drums, and two other instruments. Um, this was another poll. So I was running an experiment. I'm running an experiment on my dedicated company page. It's a 30 day exper experiment where I'm going to post 600 posts. So 20 times a day, if I miss a day, I make up for it another day. Um, sometimes if I'm really excited, I try to do more in one day right now. I am behind by half a day. Um, but anyways, just to see what happens. And I was asking, I'll actually, I'll open this one last. Uh, I'll show you the results here. I was asking people what they thought it, this experiment is doing to the impressions. And it was just some percentages. Like, do you think it increased by 300%, 1,000%? Anyways, it increased right now by like four or 5,000% um, my number of impressions on the company page due to that exercise. And then the last post that did really well, really surprising was um, my, my child took this picture of me holding a guitar. I only posted it for self-motivation of like, I want to learn guitar again. And the post just took off with over a hundred comments. Um, so yeah, those uh, those are my my top performing posts. But there, there was a picture in it, right? There was a picture. Yes, I know you. You say that uh, pictures don't do well, but sometimes it's, I don't know. So, I, I I saw this as well, and I think that was that was a combination of you, the guitar, the topic. The text it was really engaging, and then, then it's getting. And it had nothing to do with data. That's the other thing. Yeah. So that makes me question sometimes: Do people want to know you personally? And it doesn't have to be too personal, if you know what I mean, right? Mm. Like it's nothing crazy. It's just me holding a guitar. But I think people were able to relate. Like, oh, I also like I play the flute, or I need to get back to my instrument, or I still do this on a monthly basis. And I did have a question in there because I genuinely cared and I wanted to know if people have any online resources that they can share where I can start learning, you know, chords again. And I had some great suggestions in there. So thank you, LinkedIn audience for that. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's very helpful when people share, actually not just comment, but share their share a link to somewhere. Right. Yeah, that's that's the that's the beauty of this. Very, uh, that helped me a lot of times. Wait, um, look, Andrew, Andrew has a, a little mission for you. So put me off screen and I think you need to take uh, Andrew's question solo. Go for I it. I was ignoring Andrew. Do it, do it. Put, put his question on screen so people know what we're talking about. I can't because I'm not the host. I, would I want control, damn it. Put it on no, screen. No, I, I, I don't want to make this about my own. So the Andrew's uh, thing was, um, can we just make Andreas go against his instincts and talk for 60 seconds only about his program? Why his I'm going to time awesome. you. Hold on. Wait. Oh, man. I can talk about this for hours. Ready? But wait a sec, wait a sec. Put me off camera and go. Okay. Go. Let's go. So uh, my data academy, data engineering academy is awesome because there is actually everything there that you need to learn data engineering. 
all the important tools with hands on with a community that we have over discord where you, if you have questions around this you can ask me questions um, there is a growing catalog we are going we're bringing new stuff all the time into the academy um, for instance right now i'm working on a gcp for data engineers course we have everything we have something on every platform then with aws with azure with gcp we have something on uh snowflake on databricks and so on and so basically it's a large growing program that we have um, with source codes and helper for uh, how to like an individual course for how to become a data engineer and have a successful job application uh, certification uh, yeah and with always with the help of okay i'm stuck write this here and then uh, either me or somebody else is coming and is helping you uh, with this yeah uh i don't know <laughs> was that a minute look okay. at you you, you, so you, let me, you let me go over the minute <laughs> well, i couldn't stop you you're the host <laughs> no i was Very looking good. at you in the in the uh, below but you oh, didn't, i was didn't catching up on my signal text me. stop it stop it <laughs> Yeah, that was very uncomfortable, but yeah. <laughs> I think I think you have to do it though, because again, if you created this academy to help people, right? You have knowledge, you want to yeah. spread this knowledge. So I think you need to, and everyone else, you have to stop thinking of this as self-promotion, as more, think of it more as you're spreading the message about how you can help somebody. So even if, if you're promoting your academy, your courses, your coaching program, whatever you're promoting, or if you're just trying to get a job, you're not... Don't think of it, I'm, I'm just talking about myself, I'm promoting myself, trying to make money. No, you're allowing other people to have that opportunity to either say yes or no to either you as a candidate or you as somebody they want to go to for um, coaching or training or education. So you're just you're just spreading the word um, to give them an opportunity to decide if that's something they want to do. If they don't know about it, they don't even know it exists. They might end up in some other crappy academy. They don't want that. That's That's true. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's also like for I think for you that counts as well, right? For the media work, you do a lot of media work with with companies, and you're sharing a lot of stuff from companies that they do. But it's usually it's something that helps people, right? We we like I'm also doing this stuff. We select stuff that we do. Um, that actually helps people and not some, some BS. Yeah, like spreading the word about conferences or new tools and software. I, I don't think of it as, you know, commercials and spamming. I actually do think of it as spreading the message and letting the community know sort of what's out there. And mm -hmm. I've come to terms with the whole self-promo is not really just self-promo. So when I promote my courses or books or anything like that, I generally don't feel like, oh, man, is my audience going to be sick of me? Because... No, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll take the, for example, the LinkedIn learning course that I, I hope people will check out after this session. Um, I hope they actually take it and it's like 45 minutes long. It's everything I know about personal branding, right? Like literally a brain dump. It took me weeks, if not months to put all that content together into a 45 minute um, course. And I'm, I do think it helps people. Thousands of people have taken it and told me it helped them. So I have no problem sharing that message, um, even if it sounds self-promotional. I don't really care because I do think it's going to help people. Mm. So. Yeah, but that let's bring this back to to everybody else who is doing personal branding is yeah. also like there is no self like the people get. You know what I mean? No. So self-conscious? What are you? No, you that trying? that there is no oversharing. There is. It's not really self-promotion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, exactly. to see this as self promotion like we are talking about selling uh, the academy, about media work, but for everybody else who wants to do personal branding, it might seem that people see it as just self-promotion. Hey, this person is the best, and so on. But it's yeah. it's actually if you want to have people know you for a certain topic or recognize you as somebody who knows about a certain topic a lot, yeah. then you need you just need to do this. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be self promotional type content, right? You could, let's say 10 times a day, find other people's content and leave a thoughtful comment or helps them solve a problem on the topic that you're trying to be known for. 
the more people see that a lot of times they'll look at the original poster, but um, I engage with other people's comments as well. If I see something that interests me, I'll jump in and have a conversation within someone else's post. And people do remember your name, your face. And that brings me to mm. one more point, actually, on all social media, you've got to make sure you take the basic steps, like adding a profile picture, using your real name, making sure your bio is filled out, right? Having a complete profile doesn't have to have every single thing that, you know, you don't need recommendations, endorsements and all that stuff. Yep. But as long as you hit the basics, I think that's important, uh, an important step before you come out there and just start sharing a lot of content. So when people come to your profile, you want them to actually click follow or connect or start a conversation with you. Yeah, I see this sometimes that people have LinkedIn profiles, for instance, without an image and, and so on. It's Are you yeah. going to follow this? Most likely. Yeah, and I get sometimes privacy. And, you know, one more point, and I know we're probably like double way over our scheduled time here, but I know not everybody yeah. wants to, let's say, build a following. So I just want to give some advice for those who want to build a personal brand, maybe within a company or who are, don't want to be publicly known. They just want to grow their personal brand, maybe internally. I think that's also very important. And you could do that within your organization. You could do that by hosting like uh, lunch and learn or something on a specific topic. doesn't cost anyone anything. Just send an email out to people who you think would be interested. Uh, maybe talk to your communications team and see if they can do a little email blast where you meet up for lunch and you give a little talk about the thing you want to be known for, teach them something. I did that with Tableau early on where I would just go out there and have sessions like little workshops and training sessions um, mm. because I simply loved teaching people and watching their face like I could do this here instead of all my excels and PowerPoints. Oh my God, like that aha moment. Um, so I, I just did those for for people and uh, and helped out. So yeah, you could do this internally yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. sometimes it's, it's absolutely, not sometimes it is fun to see that People say like, oh, yeah. we, that, it's that it's actually that easy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this would exactly. be way, way more uh, complicated. OK, as you mentioned, we are already over the time. We said, oh, let's have a 30 minute chat. And then I think we, we got into talking and sharing our stuff on LinkedIn, uh, the impressions and so on. So <laughs> we went a bit over. Um, yeah, everybody, I, I don't have the link to Kate's course in my um, in my YouTube video. I'm going to post this afterwards. Um, look for it on LinkedIn. You can also just go to do you have it in your profile? I guess so, right? Um, it's not on my profile, but if you go to LinkedIn learning, and just look for my name, you will find I have two yes. courses. I have a third one coming out in October, yeah. but there's only one on personal branding. So if you just look for even just my last name, I'm pretty sure I'm the only LinkedIn learning instructor with the last name for now. Um, you'll find the course. It's like I said, 45 minutes, yeah, really yeah. down to the point. And LinkedIn Learning does a great job at making the courses look good. Just they just need to go to your profile and then scroll down here. LinkedIn oh, ooh, you know my profile better than I knew, me. So. I knew you had it on your profile. So um, <laughs> yeah, and then then check it out. I think it's very helpful. And if you let me remove this and. If you think or if you found this now interesting and you want to get more into the doing and into the details, check that out. Yes. And then thanks, Kate. Thanks, thanks Andreas. Coming. This was fun. Thanks for doing this. And thanks, thanks. everybody for, for joining. Lots of great questions. I know we didn't have yeah. time to do get to them all. Yeah, it's unfortunately. <sighs> time flies. Let's... <laughs> yeah, time flies. And um, if you have something, maybe DM us or, or answer to a post of us on, on uh, social media. Yep, and absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kate. See you next Bye. time. Thanks. Bye.